This video, the second in my series on dreams, focuses on dreams and emotions. Let's start with nightmares. Nightmares are fairly common. Most of us can recall some dream with emotions so strong that they woke us up in fright. But most dreams aren't like that. They may have strong emotions, but those emotions are reasonably well managed. Or they may have emotional ups and downs that are likewise reasonably well managed. Or they may appear to have mild emotions or even none at all. But behind the scenes, in most cases, emotions appear to play an important role in dreams. Indeed, assessment of innumerable dreams has led many investigators to conclude that most dreams, especially REM dreams, are emotion-driven. As noted dream expert Ernest Hartman says in his book Dreams and Nightmares, dreaming provides an explanatory metaphor for the dreamer's emotional state of mind. Or as dream expert Alan Hobson put it in his classic book The Dreaming Brain, the brain is concocting a story not to make sense of images but to create images to make sense of emotions. Why should this be? Why should emotions play such an important role in dreams? The most likely reason is that they are not just emotions. Rather, as noted in my videos on emotions, thought and emotion appear densely intertwined within the human brain's prefrontal lobes, at least as densely intertwined as the stripes on a barber's pole. And researchers have also found something equally interesting that when you cut certain mighty cables coming out of the prefrontal cortex, something very interesting happens. Dreaming stops. Therefore, as both our emerging understanding of the brain and a wide range of dream reports suggest, we can reasonably assume that most of the emotions showing up in dreams don't work in isolation. Rather, they work intimately with thought processes and resulting decisions about what sorts of dream images to summon, where attention should be directed, what sort of emotional feedback is in order, and how the dream should continue to unfold. In much of this, the role of the prefrontal lobes is key. The prefrontal lobes coordinate closely with the mechanisms of consciousness, so they are well equipped to transmit thought-related feelings in ways which generate the images and scenarios that register in our sleeping mind as dreams. But things don't end there, for it looks as though the content of these dreams gets communicated to lots of other brain areas, much as the content of our conscious mind gets communicated to lots of brain areas when we're awake, and dream images and scenarios get broadcast back to the prefrontal lobes and also to the amygdala and other lower emotion centers, in this way, these lower emotion centers get new inputs that can range from bland to exciting. And depending on how these emotion centers happen to be programmed, the response to these new inputs can range from nil to high arousal. Thus, partly because of their nature, and partly because of their wide audience within the brain, these new inputs can wind up maintaining or even restoring tranquility or they can evoke emotional ups and downs, or they can trigger an upward surge of emotions that overwhelms the dreamer. So there actually is a sort of a dialogue in process, and while emotions drive our dreams, the resulting images and sensations of the dreams can influence emotions and presumably other brain processes in complex ways. So here are new interpretations, new images, and new themes, that when played back to the emotion centers can evoke new responses, new brain-body changes, and new feelings. This theory tells a lot about the emotional dynamics of normal dreams. But what about abnormal dreams? What about recurring nightmares and the recurring nighttime flashbacks of post-traumatic stress disorder? We have dealt with these problems and their treatment in our videos on sleep disorders. Now we will take a closer look at how they happen. 
The emotional intensity and recurring nature of such events draws our attention away from the prefrontal lobes and toward the amygdala, the brain's hardwired fear generator. Like the prefrontal lobes, the amygdala has the power to summon memories or strongly influence their summoning in sleep. And what that implies is that the prefrontal lobes do not have a monopoly on recalling the memories that shape our dreams. Prefrontal pathways may be needed to activate dreams and maintain normal dreaming, but the amygdala and other emotion centers can have a major influence on the images recalled, one that can become utterly dominant in recurring nightmares, including nighttime post-traumatic stress disorder flashbacks. In many cases, however, we find that these recurring memories can change. More and more moderating dream material may be introduced, and eventually in such cases, the affected subject's dreams slowly return to their normal patterns, whatever those may be. It is hard to determine whether the dreams themselves are responsible, but in cases where the problem is being resolved, it appears that traumatic memories are being related to other memories, either through the dreaming process or in other ways, to a point where, in due course, the affected dreamer can cope with the trauma. That's not because the amygdala is changing. As noted earlier, the amygdala is hardwired. Its ties to the traumatic events causing the problem might as well be setting concrete. What's changing is that new connections are forming, new connections that relate the traumatic memories to memories of other life experiences. For example, traumatic memories of an encounter with a snake might get connected to information about how to deal with snakes, or knowledge that snakes rarely attack people, or memories of benign snake encounters, or awareness that most outdoor sounds in the grass don't mean a snake is present. Through such connections, many signals and many dreams that might otherwise trigger unbridled emotional escalation get curbed, modified, or diverted by the response of the prefrontal lobes to the point where a runaway emotional outburst doesn't happen. Well then, what is the role of dreams in all this? Do they cause this beneficial change? or do they merely reflect the fact that it has happened? As noted in my sleep disorder videos, we know that various daytime therapies can help to resolve traumatic sleep disorders. But dreams may also contribute. Among other things, the basic principle that neurons which fire together wire together makes it look as though the broad associations roused in dreams could help to integrate traumatic memories with other less traumatic memories and the evident communication between the amygdala and other brain regions, including the prefrontal lobes, that is found in traumatic dreams, provides a fertile source for the sort of neural activity likely to increase the influence of the prefrontal region over the amygdala, precisely the sort of neural activity needed to produce moderation of the trauma. This well-established theory that dreams can be therapeutic has implications that go well beyond traumatic dreams. For not just traumatic dreams, but most dreams appear to be emotion-driven. We tend to dream about problems that concern us, whether or not those problems are stressful enough to excite the amygdala. And except for the fact that the amygdala goes off the rails in traumatic dreams and other nightmares, the dreaming process seen in these dreams looks quite similar to what we find in ordinary dreams. So if dreams following trauma may be therapeutic, there's good reason to conclude that other dreams may be therapeutic too. Up to now, I have been looking at this dialogue between dreams and emotions from the vantage point of emotions. Emotions drive our dreams, and they receive new data from those dreams that cause various sorts of emotional responses and alterations. But where do these new dream data come from? It looks as though they come from the conscious mind. As the very existence of dreams attests, the mechanisms of consciousness are active in our sleep. So it seems appropriate to look at this key dialogue from another angle and to explore the selecting 
coordinating and guiding role of consciousness in dreams. That is the subject of my next and final video.